Hi, in this video I'm going to be talking about using social media for voiceover. Especially when you're starting out, everyone will tell you that using social media to build your voiceover business is vital, and what's even more likely is that they'll probably also try and sell you a course on doing so. So I thought in this video I'd go over a couple of the main platforms and how I end up using them for my voiceover business. Let's go old fashioned to start with, with Facebook. Now the whole way that I use Facebook is really essentially so I can find out information and get connections with other voiceover artists as well. Uh, obviously kind of like building relationships with your fellow peers is really valuable in terms of finding out who's having good experiences with various different coaches, webinars, training and equipment. And this is actually manifested in some of the uh, groups that I'm a part of. So for example, I would say that the British voiceovers Facebook group is a really fantastic uh, resource in terms of being able to search and find loads of different information. But there's also uh, Mark Scott's VOpreneur uh, for the whole marketing side of things. Uh, there's the League of List Builders by Jonathan Tilly. All of these are great, as are Gravy for the Brain, uh, the Voiceover Network. Just be aware that a lot of these groups are also all they all have a monetized component as well. Those webinars and the workshops, it's one of the reasons why they foster that whole community spirit as well. So it's a useful thing, but just be aware of how that mechanism works. What I don't do on the platform is actually book many voiceover jobs. There's probably a handful of people over the last five years who have reached out to me directly because they know I'm a voiceover or because we have a mutual acquaintance, a friend of a friend, that kind of thing. Um, but it's not a platform that you can do any kind of cold outreach on because, to be honest, your messages will probably end up in someone's spam messaging as opposed to their direct messaging anyway. So lead generation and actually making contact, it's a no. Now, Instagram is probably the platform that I personally enjoy using the most, but in terms of actually getting leads and getting work out of it, now that, that's a whole other thing. Obviously, there is actually a search engine in Instagram, so you can put in video production or any other kind of term, or search via hashtags. You can find relevant businesses or individuals, and then of course, you can DM them. Now, inevitably, I would say anyone who has an Instagram account will have experienced um, some random person following you, immediately liking three or four of your posts and commenting once, and then disappearing into the ether. This does not constitute good marketing. If done right, then of course you can actually forge relationships with potential clients, which could be absolutely great, but it does require a lot of very focused effort and you consistently checking in with those clients as well, not just messaging and then forgetting. The crucial aspect with this is to always ask yourself who is most likely to be running the account. If it's a huge, big international brand, then the person that's in charge of Coca-Cola's DMs is probably not going to be the same person that's actually booking the voiceover talent for any of their commercials. However, on a startup business or an indie game developer or a small animation studio, then potentially you might be making connection with a creative director. So just bear that in mind, who's actually got access to that account. Essentially, I use the story functions as um, a fancy way of doing my accountability. Some people like to kind of log their achievements at the end of a day or a week or a month. I just like taking a picture and doing my accountability that way. And so we come to Twitter and the wonderful world of toxicity that it is. Now, obviously, Twitter can be a great resource. And generally, people would say, oh, if you want to do any games, especially indie games, then Twitter is definitely the place because there are so many game developers who are, are particularly active there. One thing that I would say about Twitter is obviously you've got that same um, search function as you do on Instagram. So you can search particular phrases like video production or you can uh, search for different hashtags. And then obviously you can either DM uh, an account. One thing I would definitely recommend is try to set up different lists. So for example, have a game dev list or have a video production or an animation studio list. That makes it much more focused which means that um, you're in a better place um, to actually start to engage and have conversations that might help your business. Again though, like Instagram, I'd always ask who is actually running the account? Is the person that you're connecting with the same person that's actually going to be booking voiceover talent for that brand or organization? 
YouTube is quite straightforward, thankfully, in that it has two main functions for a voiceover. The first one is obviously educationally. Uh, you can find fantastic people talking about the marketing side of things, the performance side of things, and the technical side of things, which are incredibly invaluable. And then the other thing you should definitely have is a YouTube channel of your own, where you actually post examples of your work and build your portfolio slowly over time, which you can then link directly to your clients, or you can filter it through a website in some way. I use YouTube, not because my aim is to uh, monetize this channel, because that's never gonna happen anytime soon, and not certainly to any credible degree but really it's because it provides me with a free platform to create content, which I can then use when following up with my clients. Because I know one of my main responsibilities in running a voiceover business is following up with my leads, my uh, prospects and my clients as well. Creating content that is specifically tailored to things that they may be interested in, that may be useful to them, just seems like I'm adding value, hopefully, anyway. LinkedIn is all business, for better and for worse, but generally for the better. Certainly in terms of lead generation, it's absolutely invaluable. The search engine is so much more powerful and intuitive and guided specifically for that purpose than any of the other social platforms. So it means in terms of actual lead generation and getting into the granular detail, you can find both businesses information, but also individuals. And then obviously, if you couple that with a web browser extension where you can find people's individual business emails, because we're GDPR compliant, then that can also be an absolutely invaluable resource. Obviously also, you can choose to try and connect with people and they can either bat you away or they can accept that connection. The thing with LinkedIn is that um, there's not that assumption that, it need, that there needs to be an existing personal connection for someone to accept. So whereas on Facebook, if someone requests and you don't know them, then they just come across as weird, with LinkedIn, it can be a lot more acceptable. Though I'd say still add a personal note of introduction if you decide to go that way. The bottom line with any social media platform is gonna be intention. Ask yourself when you open that app, are you opening the app so that you can find another great coach? Is it because you want to connect with other voiceover artists to improve you or your brand in some way through performance, mentorship, marketing, technical expertise, etc.? Or are you opening it so that you can find leads that you can reach out to or clients that you want to follow up with? A lot of people will be attracted to social media because there's busy work and so they'll spend ages composing a post that isn't relevant to any potential clients or prospects or leads and covering that post in a bunch of hashtags which will have no actual value but they'll do that because it's a lot more interesting than actually doing the grind that will actually get their business further like sending out the emails and doing the actual marketing. And the other cycle of behaviour to try and avoid on social media is the one of prolonged self-flagellation, of looking at other people's highlight reels, comparing them to yourself, to where you are on a not particularly good day, and blaming yourself for not being effective, therefore wasting yourself time and emotional energy. When in doubt, please use the mute button. It really is your friend. I hope you've enjoyed and gained something from this quick overview of uh, social media platforms and how they can link in with your voiceover business. And obviously, if you're the one person who books all of their jobs exclusively through uh, Discord, for example, then do let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I wish you a great day. Please do like, subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you next time.